In this video, I'm going to talk to you about how we can use Microsoft Teams for live teaching. Now, if you're using Microsoft Teams to teach by displaying a PowerPoint, it's fairly easy to show that on the screen and then talk over it. But if you want to write some working live, for example, in maths or science or any other subject where you want to do some modeling in front of the pupils, you need a way of being able to write so they can see what you're doing. Now, there's various options. You could use a visualizer like this one, and that one you can plug into the computer and use nice and easily. Most of us may not have those at home. Um, you could also use a graphics tablet like this one, um, which come with a pen. Now, with those, you can then write on a, a piece of software on the computer and display that across the live stream. The problem with these is it takes a bit of practice to be able to work out how to connect what you're doing over here with what's on the screen. Some people find that difficult, and of course, that's extra expense. So in this video, my aim is to show you a way of being able to do this live teaching and modeling with equipment that hopefully you've got lying around at home, so you don't need to be trying to get anything else. So all we're gonna use for this is a computer. So I've just got a Windows laptop here, but it would work on a Mac as well, and a mobile phone. So you can do this with an Android phone, you can do it with an iPhone, you could do it with an iPad, any phone uh, like that, you can get the same software we're gonna talk about for that. Let's just talk through the physical setup, first of all. So what we've got here, the important bits, if I get rid of these, are the computer, and you might wanna plug this in for power, but nothing else needs to be plugged into it. And then we've got the phone, and again, you might wanna plug that in to power while you're using it. And we've got a piece of software, which I will explain in a moment, which we can run an app on the phone and a piece of visualizer software on the computer, and they will talk to each other as long as they're on the same wireless network. So the way we set it up physically, as you can see here, we need to prop the phone up somehow over whatever it is we're trying to record. So I've got a whiteboard here, but it could be a piece of play paper, it could be an iPad. There's lots of different ways of writing below the phone. The important thing is to get it the right height. So this is about 40 centimetres above the table, and that's about right to be able to fit this whiteboard or a piece of A4 paper in the, in the shot. Now, obviously, you want to try and make sure the phone is stable, so that's what the books are doing here. These are to allow me to keep the phone nice and still and save it from falling off. Once you've got that physical setup ready, it's just a matter of connecting up the app and the computer, and then getting your live broadcast going. The software for the computer is actually a Chrome app that doesn't need to be installed, so you can run it without admin access. You need to go to the IPVO website, go to software, find the version of IPVO Visualizer for Chrome. Click on the link and it will open up in the Chrome store, add the app there, and when it's installed, it will appear in your apps list. You can load that from the Chrome apps. The app for the phone is called iDotCam. You can find it on the Android Play Store or the Apple App Store. Once you've installed it, make sure you give it access to the camera and then it's easily connected to the Visualizer software. We're going to have a look at some of the settings for the phone app. So all the settings are down the left hand side of the image. You've got a light at the top, quite useful, but it does shine a bit off reflective surfaces. Then we've got exposure, which allows you to change how bright the image is vary it depending on the room you're in. Then white balance, so you can change depending on your light source. And then a really important setting is the focus setting. It defaults to AFC, which is constant focus. That means that as I put my hand in, the camera refocuses on it and then has to refocus to the board when I move away. And all that jumping around is a bit distracting. You want to put it on AFS, which is single focus, which means once it's locked, it won't get distracted by my hand moving over when you're writing on it, and it will stay on the board. Then there's the freeze option at the bottom and the little turn off the image icon as well. So using the phone app with the Visualizer software, you need to first open up the Visualizer using apps on the Chrome browser. It will default to showing your webcam, so you need to switch it to the phone on the top left. It should find your phone without a problem if they're on the same wireless network. If it's not finding it, make sure that your wireless network is set to be a private network. Then we can zoom in. We've got 
options for rotating the image, quite useful if your phone needs to be propped up the wrong way around. You can change the resolution. Most phone cameras have quite high resolutions, so that's useful to get a really detailed image. You can also change the exposure in the same way you do on the phone. So that's quite handy to have that. And then bottom right, you've got some other options, including a light, which is your phone light. That works in the same way, but it does take a bit longer. Now we've got the physical equipment set up and we've installed the app on the phone and the program on the computer. It's time to start a Microsoft Teams live event. You start a live event using the calendar. So you go to the top right, click on the drop down menu, go to live event, type in the title of your event, set the date and time. Then you've got the option to add more people in to work with you. So you can change either producers or presenters. If you want to add another presenter, you can invite them there. Then you want to make sure that it's set to a public event if you want people just to be able to come with a link without signing in. Change any other settings that you want and then schedule your event. Once you've done that, you can get the attendee link and send that to whoever needs it. And you can either join now or join the event later. Once you've joined the event, you'll then see that on the left hand side, we've got the current content. On the right hand side, we've got the live view. If you go to share your media, choose what you want to share, in this case, the visualizer software, you'll see Teams minimizes. To go back to it, you click on the little live lesson button, and then you can load content into the video. Now you've got two options, either just a single shot, or you can show two things at once. So there we've loaded up the image of the visualizer and made it just on its own. You need to click send live to make it to the event, and you must click start, otherwise nobody will be able to see your event running live. Once you've done that, you can change various things you can go back to the visualizer software if you want to, so you can see that nice and big. If you've only got one screen, that's a good idea. You can also then show yourself if you want to show your webcam, or you can switch so that you've got the, both the visualizer and your webcam on at once. Make sure that whenever you set something new in the content, you always click send live, otherwise nobody will be able to see it. Let's have a look at some of the settings that we could use in Microsoft Teams uh, to make sure that our live event goes as smoothly as possible. So at the top left, you've got the number of attendees worth paying attention to. The rest of the settings are all on the right hand side. So you've got network health, which shows how fast your connection is. Make sure that it's all running as it needs to be. Then meeting notes, if you and your fellow presenter want to share things. And meeting chats between you and your presenters, not the other people viewing. You can see who's presenting and who's viewing has been signed in, and you can change your settings with your speakers, your microphone, make sure everything's running nicely as you need it to be. At the bottom, you've got a mute all option where you can mute all presenters and stop everything from showing. Now everything's set up, here's a few tips to make sure your live lesson goes as well as possible. Because you're using a phone as a visualizer, you want to turn on do not disturb so you don't get any notifications in the middle of your lesson. On an iPhone, when you do this, make sure you tick always in the settings so there's no notifications even when the phone's screen is on. On Android, you want to make sure that you don't have any visuals or sound on. That's one of the settings you need to check. Every Android phone is slightly different, so you'll need to dig through your menus to find it. When you're starting your live event in Microsoft Teams, make sure you've got every other program that you're going to need to display open first. So your visualizer software and also things like PowerPoint, if you want to share those on your screen, make sure they're started before you start the live event. Otherwise, sometimes the share menu won't show them properly. Audio in your live event is in some ways more important than what is shown on the screen. If people can hear you clearly, then they're going to be able to understand you better. Now, the microphone you use to record your audio is going to be quite important. Um, there's various ways you can do it. The default might be to use your laptop microphone, but that's not the best idea. Here's what your laptop microphone would sound like. So now this is the microphone in my laptop recording my voice. As you can hear, it sounds a bit far away. It doesn't sound particularly clear, and it's not very easy for people to hear exactly what you're saying. Another option is something like a headset. This one is very cheap, less than 20 pounds. 
but it makes the sound much clearer because the microphone is closer to my mouth and it's not directly in front. So it sounds clearer and easier to hear than the laptop microphone. Even something like a simple pair of earphones that might have come with your phone that has a microphone built into the cable is going to sound better because the microphone is closer to your mouth and also those are tuned to record voices because they're used for phone calls. Hopefully that's been of some help in getting yourself set up for live teaching using Microsoft Teams and perhaps your phone as a visualizer. Thanks for watching.